What we just looked at was this thing called the Whispering Gallery. And there are Whispering Galleries all over the world. They have, um, they have been, you know, uh, I was going to say architecture, architected, uh, Built. designed, right? <laughs> they have been designed for this exact purpose. And you saw a brief diagram. I wonder if you would draw it with me, right? It looks something like that, right, roughly. And you've got um, this person standing over here, and another person standing over here, right? Now we know the way sound usually works with regard to distance, okay? The further away you are, the less that you hear. Now, by the way, just physically speaking, he actually mentioned it in the song, I don't know if you caught it because it went by very quickly. Physically speaking, why does that happen? Or maybe I should say mathematically speaking. Why is it that something further away, like for, sorry, let me give you an example. When I see you guys right now, you look as bright to me as you would if I saw you 100 <coughs> meters away. So why is it that when I speak to you now, versus if I speak to you 100 meters away, you can hardly hear my voice? Why is that? Yeah. The sound, when it has to be transferred into the air particles, and there's like more space between us than if you were closer. So it has to, it dissipates more. Yeah, good, okay. So it's actually a bit of a, I've played a bit of a trick on you, in that actually light does exactly the same thing. It's just over a much bigger scale. But the, the concept is the same. That, you know, sound is going out like this, right? from a source, okay? But because as it goes, if you want to think about it this way, it gets um, less and less dense because it has to cover more space as it, as it sort of radiates out, right? So what actually arrives at your ear is, well, there's less of it, right? So that's why we perceive that as a, a softer sound. Okay? But I wonder if you saw that little animation of what happens here when they're inside the Whispering Gallery, right? Because all those sounds are going out, but rather than going out and dissipating, as we were just describing, they don't dissipate at all, right? They do this weird reflecty thing where all the sounds which from my voice, my mouth, are going in all directions, they get sort of channeled towards one point, okay? Now, this is a really fantastic um, phenomenon. I actually don't know if there's any whispering gallery of any kind in Australia. If you go, go, just go look up and find out, we should go visit one. But um, when you hear it, like I don't know if you heard, the first time they went and stood in their corners, and he's like, can you hear me? Right, and the other guy says, yes, I can hear you. Like that whisper that you hear is him, the other way, facing the opposite direction, demonstrating this principle. Okay, now pause for a moment. I was talking about patterns, right? About things that are related, even though they don't seem like Oh, obviously those things are the same thing. I want you to look at this pattern of reflection. Does this not seem a bit familiar? Like Have we not looked at a shape in recent times that does something kind of like this? What have we looked at? The circle which has the same like um, chord and then sometimes the same... Like okay, alright, so number one. And actually you would know because you asked me the question about rainbows, right? Number one, if you look in a circle and you um, have like an arc over here, it's a tensor chord and so on, okay? Every angle that is standing on this arc, it traces out, it subtends the same angle on the circumference, okay? That's the first thing that I notice, that you've got this like, it even looks like the same kind of pattern. That's number one. There's another kind of shape you've been looking at that does a similar thing. This is about reflecting things, right? Big, big, big card. Jen, the parabolic reflector. Do you remember this? In fact, we even did a specific question about this. And I made a point to say, look, when you've got a parabola, wherever it is, there is a point such that if you, for example, if what you choose is light instead of sound, right? Um, if you send in things like this, right? And so long as all of those lines are perpendicular to the directrix, which is implied down here, right? provided that direction, every single one of those lines is going to do what? Come to the it's it's going to reflect, and it's going to all that every single thing is going to come back to here. So they're going to do things like this. Uh, it's going to bounce back. It's going to bounce across. You get the idea. And we did, we did the proof of this even when we talked about like angle of incidence and angle of reflection, blah, 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 right? So in other words, you're getting this, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Convergence, exactly the word I want. You're getting this convergence of sort of things that are going in other places and they all come to a single point, okay? I want you to look at one, two, three. 
these shapes, you actually probably don't even necessarily know what this shape is yet, but you sort of, it looks familiar. This shape and the circle and the parabola, they are just like the path of the sun and the vibration of guitar string and all of those little atoms and their fundamental particles and that kind of thing. They are deeply, deeply connected. And I don't want to tell you just yet what the connection is, but hopefully you notice something's going on here, right? Something mysterious. So, the way we're going to enter into this, like mathematically through things, that, objects that you know, is we're going to start over with this guy. Okay, we're going to start with the parabola. Because in terms of understanding all this, it's what we're most familiar with. Uh, it's what we did a lot of work with. So do a little subhead for me, which is review <coughs> the locus of the parabola. Okay. Now, the locus of a parabola we define with two pieces of information, right? Rather than giving me an equation of y equals x squared, blah, 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 we say, okay, give me, and you already talked about the two pieces of information when you described this phenomenon. What are the two geometric pieces of information that define a parabola? Can you take this? Number one, the focus, and number two, the directions. Okay, so just to get our heads back in the space, because it's been a while, we've been very calculus heavy recently. Uh, let's pick an easy focus and an easy directrix, and let's just you know remember how do we get the um, equation of a parabola that obeys you know those kinds of things. So for example, we usually call our focus S if you recall. Right? What would be a nice easy focus to call? Zero, zero five. Zero. I'm going to go for the zero. Now one is a nice value, okay, but it's actually very small, and if you recall, it's going to it's going to make some of our lengths like four. fractions. So I'm going to go for four. I think four is a really really <coughs> nice value. Um, where would be a nice convenient place to put the directrix? Minus zero. Y equals, y equals, equals how about four. negative four? <laughs> okay, again, I'm trying to make things nice and simple, right? And you can probably picture now, I hope in your head, where is the vertex of this problem going to be? It's going to be the origin. Okay, now let's prove that. Let's demonstrate it. If I've got this and I've got this, the whole idea of lock is, is then you've got a point and it wiggles around or it traces out a path, right? So since it moves, we call it x, y, right, because it's, it's variable, right? And then to get this ball rolling, we say the distance to the focus and the distance to the directrix are equal, equal right? So we write P, S equals P, D, right? Then we have to do some algebra. We need two points distance, and then we need the perpendicular distance formula. I'll give you a minute. Can you just do that? Get down to the end of your equation. Will you do that for me? OK, excellent. So we have an equation. We have verified what we were expecting before, namely that this is going to pass through the origin and so on. Happy times. Okay. Now, now here's where everything starts to get a little bit suspicious, right? We are saying that this is somehow connected to these objects. <coughs> How can we try and tease out what's going on? Okay. And the way we're going to do this is, I wonder if you see, just having a look at these objects, right? Kind of the difference between these is sort of a difference of proportion, right? Do you see, for instance, just looking at these two, this almost looks like kind of a stretched out version of this. Do you sort of notice that? Like I've kind of gone, and that's the shape that I've got, okay? Over here, it's almost like I stretched it so much that it's kind of like broken on one side. It's like opened out, okay? Because we know it, it never comes back to close, okay? So when I think proportion, proportionality, right? This process that we went through in terms of getting the equation of the locus, has a proportion, well actually has multiple proportions, but it has one particular proportion that is hiding there. It's kind of hidden in plain sight, right? Um, it's hidden because when I asked you, what do we do with all this, how do we put it all together? You told me this correctly. You said these two distances are the same, okay? That means there's a proportion between these two differences, distances, right? The proportion is one to one, or I could just say one, right? So I want you to take this line, go back to it, right? And I want you to write it like so. Now, it seems like we've hardly done anything at all, right? All I've done is I've, I've sorry, that's one. Yeah, all I've divided, all I've done is I've divided both sides by PD, right? But now what you see is that to get the parabola, what I want is the proportionality between these things to be identical, right? I want them to be equivalent. What happens if I look at different proportions, right? And this is, I was getting ahead of myself. 
what if we tried? What if we tried proportion like a half? What would happen? What would happen to our ensuing equation? And what kind of locus would we trace out if instead of being you know, an equal distance, what if this distance was twice the length of this distance? Okay. Now algebraically, you can still do this. Would you get out your pen, give it a crack? Instead of starting here, I'd like you to try starting here and see what ends up happening to the algebra. So 2ps equals p. 